Hello everyone, Thunderbro here, and today I want to do something a bit different. So as Gintama fans, we get a bit of everything. We get well-written characters, amazing comedy, great fight scenes, a wonderful soundtrack, and an interesting series lore and history. But of all the major titles in Shonen Jump from the last two decades, Gintama is one of the few, maybe alongside Bleach, that doesn't have a tournament arc. I'm not saying that Gintama and Bleach miss out by a lack of a tournament arc, since there's no real reason or place for them to happen in either series. I'm just stating the fact that Gintama doesn't have one. Despite Gintama's comedic roots, it has some of the most intense and well choreographed fights in Shonen Jump, at least in my own opinion. And we're introduced to so many badass fighters and swordsmen that you can't help but speculate what would happen if certain characters faced off against others. Now I know that power scaling and stuff isn't really what Gintama's about, and it isn't one of the allures of the series, but I think it'd be fun to imagine how a tournament arc would have went if for some reason Sirachi decided to throw one in there. So I want to run through a hypothetical Gintama tournament and try to conclude what would happen during certain matches and who would come out on top. Now this is difficult to make decisions on since we don't have clear cut power scales or tiers like other Shonen Jump titles. So I'll try my best to come up with winners based on the abilities we were shown and the accomplishments of the characters throughout the series, as well as how their personalities would play into a controlled tournament environment. Now the circumstances of this tournament are as follows. It's in a standard ring or arena, and to win you have to knock out the opponent. Throw them out of bounds or make them give up. No killing, obviously. Now I want to factor in both protagonists as well as antagonists and villains, so let's just say any known criminals who would compromise themselves by showing up to a public tournament, like Jirocho or Takasugi, and even though he's not a villain, Katsura is kind of in the same situation as Takasugi as a Joey Rebel, so I'll do this under the assumption that they would show up under disguises, you know, Jackie Chan style. The timeline placement for this will be right after the Kabuki Cho 4 Divas arc, so Hosen and Jiraiya are dead, so obviously they're not participating, but Obi Hajime, Shige Shige, Oboro, and Isaburo are all still alive so they could show up for this. I'll be using this tournament bracket generator and the pairings will be completely random. Here are the list of participants, pause it if you want to go through all of them. So let's get started. Alright, let's get started. Uh, on this, Mad Dows with nothing better to do a single stage tournament third place match just for the hell of it why not plus the participants i think i did that Start time. game i mean with this count martial mixed martial arts sure i guess i feel like that'd work Save and continue. Oh, here we go. Okay, so let me start the tournament. Okay. All right. So the matchups: a Simon and Elizabeth. I mean, a Simon is good, but Elizabeth has been through so much shit. I mean, the the Benny Zakura arc. Uh, he's been he was involved in the Rakuyo arc, the the uh, Farewell Shin Sengumi arc. That guy's done some shit. You know what I mean? Or you know that thing. We don't really know what we don't really know what Elizabeth is. Just for the sake of all the things Elizabeth has been a part of, we know so much more about what Elizabeth can do. I mean, Asimon is good, but I mean, she needed uh, uh, Gintoki's help to get to get close to Yaimon. I don't know, I mean, again, we, d we don't see anything of a Simon outside of the Shinigami arc, but, damn. Uh, I'll have to give this one to Elizabeth. Oh, okay. I'm gonna put a score. Okay, there, Elizabeth won. Alright, so Elizabeth goes through. Alright, Hasegawa versus Obero. I, you know what, there's no point in even discussing this one. Look, we know Hasegawa, he, uh, he was like, he, he was a, a bodyguard to, you know, members of the government and, you know, some Tendosho guys or some Amanto guys, but... Look, he was in uh, um, the, Kabu, the Kabuki for Diva's arc and he, he got his ass kicked, so it's either he forgot he, you know, he forgot how to fight, or maybe he was only a gunman. Either way, uh, shit, just, oh, Obero takes this, you know, no question. Okay, Hijikata versus the ketchup guy. Um, I actually forgot that guy's name. 
uh, shit, what was it again? Let me search. I like, uh, you know, I like the, what the randomizer did here. Perfect rematch, mayonnaise versus ketchup. But unfortunately, Hijigata would wipe the floor with that guy. No doubt about it. That guy never showed up to do anything afterwards, and Hijigata was in it like a million things. The Shinsengumi crisis, the, the you know, Shogun assassination, uh, the Mitsuba arc. Farewell, Shinsengumi. So, sorry, ketchup guy, but once again, mayonnaise prevails. I'm gonna have to give this to Hijigata. All right, the next matchup. This is an interesting one: Sukuyo versus Shokaku. You know, uh, Neptune Shokaku, the Planet of the Apes Gorilla Man. Uh, so here's the thing: Shokaku is fucking strong, right? I mean, he went toe to toe with Katsura right up until the last moment, where somehow Katsura's head was way uh, was way stronger than Shokaku's head. You know, Katsura has like reinforced steel in his head, while Shokaku just had a normal ass head. So. Damn, I mean, Shokuku's good, but Sukuyo's also been involved in shit, you know, she, she's proven herself on multiple occasions. I mean, I mean, she's just been involved in a lot. I mean, she fought alongside Gintoki uh, against Hosen. She, she was involved in the Courtesan of a Nation stuff. She fought against Jiraiya. But, you know, as much as I think Sukuyo's cool, uh, she needed help for a lot of those confrontations. Maybe not Courtesan of a Nation, I mean... Gintoki was really the focus of the combat there. They fought against all those uh, palace guards, but then once Obero showed up, it was really Gintoki versus Obero. So, you know, n nobody else really got in on the action of Korra's Nation. So it's really hard to determine how Sukuyo would have done against uh, uh, Obero. But, you know, if we're judging by the, the other fights, we got Sukuyo, uh, you know, Gintoki and Sukuyo, them plus 48 other people. Uh, was needed to beat Hosen, and then Sukuyo and Jiraiya together both got their asses kicked by Gintoki. So, as much as Sukuyo is great, she's awesome, but just judging by the fact that Shokaku stood up to Katsura one on one, Shokaku gets the, the W here. So, sorry, Sukuyo. Oh man, this is difficult. I mean, that's really the first fan favorite to, to lose. Uh, you know, to lose to someone who's not as much of a fan favorite, obviously. Bonsai versus Zenzo. Uh, I mean, Zen Zenzo, Zenzo does pretty well for himself. We don't we don't see much else of Zenzo uh, like actually fighting legit aside from the Shogun assassination arc. I mean, he beats the shit out of a lot of guys. I just, man, this is hard. Bonsai. I mean, look, but. Bonsai's Bonsai's freaking intense. You know what I mean? So, like the sh the shit ha that he's been able to do. Didn't he? Was that him or was that Gintoki? Didn't he take down a helicopter with his uh, with his guitar strings? I don't know. I, I can't remember whether that was Gintoki or uh, or, or or Bonsai did that. I know that during the Shinsengumi Crisis, Bonsai and Gintoki had a confrontation, but I don't remember who took down a hel. Someone took down a helicopter. All right, but. You know, we've seen so much more of Bonsai. He's been able to, you know, beat the shit out of people with a guitar and with a sword. And, you know, you know, he's stepped up to the challenge against Gintoki. Yeah, he didn't win, but you know, he's he stood he stood up to Gintoki. So I'm gonna have to go with Bonsai on this one. Sorry, Zenzo. At least he doesn't have to fight more, so he can treat his ass wounds. So Bonsai gets this one. Saito versus Takasugi. Oh, okay. So, you know, Saito is actually kind of underrated. I mean, he's pretty good. Saito, Saito, uh, if I remember correctly, Saito was almost on par with uh, with Katsura. I think Katsura just went out in the end, if I remember correctly. But Saito was, you know, was there. And if he can take on, if he, if if Saito can take on Katsura. To such an extent, then Takasugi he would also be able to take him on. But unfortunately, I think just Takasugi has so much more on him. So, you know, but I honestly I think Takasugi would take this one. Saito just lost out against Katsura, if I remember, and you know I don't think his luck would be any different against Takasugi. You know, Takasugi is just as strong, maybe stronger than than Katsura, at least at this point in the story. You know, if we're talking. Um, 
Kabuki 4 Divas. Then again, I mean, it doesn't have to be judging by, you know, how strong we think people are uh, at Kabuki, Kabuki 4 Divas. We can even go now. It's it's hard to like it's hard to say who would who's stronger between Takasu and K Takasugi and Katsura. I mean, I, I hope I don't have to make that decision when the when the brackets start closing down. But uh, yeah, Takasugi would win that one by a slim margin, but Takasugi would take this one. So the W for Takasugi. He moves on, and I think this is the last match of the. The, I guess I can call it the preliminaries. Uh, Binboksai versus Piriko. Now, this one is interesting. Now, both characters only have an arc. Just one arc in which we really see what they can do. But, I mean, Binboksai is pretty awesome. I mean, you know, he's a little man, but, you know, the guy's got some moves. So, he he, he was pretty awesome. I mean, Kyubei learned from, learned from someone really good. But... Got Pirico. I mean, and this is hard. I mean, Pirico is pretty cool too. Look, okay, so we've seen Pirico take on whole armies essentially. Like we we've seen Pirico beat the shit out of crowds of people, you know. So unfortunately, we haven't seen that kind of thing from Bimboksai. He he took on the members of the Orzui and the Shinsengumi, but you know he ended up he didn't end up winning. And uh, he's he's. He's pretty old. I know in anime that doesn't really mean a lot when a character's old. I mean, we have an abundance of old characters that beat the shit out of people. Netero, anybody, but... Uh, look, okay, so... Bimboksai, you know, he, him, like, as a Yagyu, he hasn't... He hasn't been involved in much. He hasn't had, like, a chance to, to hone his skills all the time. He's just kind of cooped up in his palace. He, you know, he, he came out to, to fight when people arrived in his household, so... He had to fight while Pirico, you know, she's out there as a as a member of the of the Yakuza, you know, just enforcing and you know wrecking shit and intimidating people. So I think Pirico would have the edge in this one. Pirico would take out Bimboksai just on account that Pirico's so much more active than Bimboksai towards the, throughout the series. She's doing so much more stuff while Bimboksai is just kind of sitting around, you know, in the in, in the Yagyu household. So yeah, Pirico gets this one. Although I still like Bimboksai, so I feel bad that I have to. You know, give him the L here, but I, I just I don't think he'd beat Pirico uh, where we're at right now. Okay, so round two. So now the preliminaries are over. Uh, Tojo versus Elizabeth. Uh, so again, we don't get a lot of Tojo, but Tojo is not so good. I, no, I mean, okay, I guess that's not fair. Tojo's all right, but I, I don't. Again, we're this is the same thing with uh, when. He, when Elizabeth fought Simon, I just think Elizabeth has done so much shit. You know what? Essentially, this is just like Bimboksai versus Pirico. You know, Tojo doesn't do a lot. He, we know he can fight. We know he can. We know he can. We, we know he can bring the fight, but he just doesn't do much. While Elizabeth is just constantly fighting people. You know, he's just, you know, he's uh, fighting the Tendosho, fighting the the you know the Kiheitai, fighting the the Amanto, fighting the the, the goddamn Harusame. He's just he's just doing everything. Elizabeth is so much more involved than we make him out to be. So, and despite Elizabeth's mascot status, he's doing so much shit all the time. So I just think Elizabeth would take down Tojo. You know, Elizabeth's, a, Elizabeth's pretty damn strong. You know, he's a mascot and we don't, uh, um, we don't put that into consideration, just how strong he is. And also I think him in his like duck costume uh, would kind of give him an advantage because uh, like some fighters won't take him seriously they're gonna be like why the hell am I fighting this duck or whatever this is why am I fighting this thing and then Elizabeth will be Elizabeth will beat the shit out of him so Elizabeth uh, takes that one Sakamoto versus Kyube. hmm now that one is really interesting I mean okay so Kyube, unlike the other members of the Yagyu household uh, Kyube is a little more involved I suppose and then, you know, this, she did the Yagyu arc, obviously. That was her big shining arc. But then she was, uh, uh, what'd she do? She, uh, she fought in the Bimu arc. She, you know, she attacked the Bimu ship with Kondo. Um, and, um, uh, what else did she do? Oh, yeah, she, you know, she fought against the Dekobokoists. You know, she attacked the Dekobokoists on that, uh, you know, uh, Chris Matsumura planet. So, 
but Sakamoto, Sa- Sakamoto, you know, Joey War veteran. He he does know his way around a sword, but he can't use it because his arm is busted. You know, his his arm is fucked. So. And uh, for characters with bullets, I didn't mention this before, but for characters like who, uh, for characters who are gunmen like Sakamoto, Matako, etc., and maybe Isaro, um I'm gonna say just so they can use the extent of their abilities, because it's kind of not fair that characters who aren't necessarily swordsmen have to go up against swordsmen using their swords. So I'm gonna say, let's just say this is stupid. I know this is stupid, but hypothetically here in this hypothetical tournament. Uh, the gunmen have like non-lethal bullets that don't kill a person, so uh, yeah, you know the bullets still hurt like a bitch. They can knock a, they can knock a person out, but let's just say they won't kill just so they can use their abilities. Because, but yeah, it's it's kind of bullshit to be honest for them for them not to be able to use their weapons. So, um, so yeah, and and here's the thing: characters have been shown to be able to dodge bullets, so it's not necessarily unfair. People dodge bullets like they're fucking nothing in Gintama, so. Uh, bullets are not much of an issue. I mean, that, that doesn't give the gunmen an advantage. Uh, but Sakamoto versus Kyubei, I mean, this is difficult. This is really difficult. Oh, I'm so conflicted right now. This is, you know, Kyubei's pretty good. She knows what she's doing. Sakamoto's a Joey War veteran. He's a great shot. And, you know, again, he has so much experience fighting in the Joey War. He, he's been all over the place as a member of the Kayentai. So, you know, he... It's not like he doesn't have any strength. I mean, like, if you went up against Sakamoto in a fist fight, it's not going to be easy. I'm just going to go with my gut here. This is this is, this is is a really difficult one. I'm going to go with my gut and say Kyubei would win. I don't know. Just, here's, here's the thing. Kyubei's really good. Kyubei's actually really good. And, ugh, fuck. It's hard. I mean, because Sakamoto's good. He's a great. He's a good shot. We know he's strong, but... I don't know. I just feel like in a controlled environment uh, where, you know... Obviously, Sakamoto can't get a kill here. It's not like he would kill anyway, but he can't win by killing. And uh, he he doesn't have the use, you know, he can't use swords while Kyubei can get up right in his face and, you know, knock him out, you know, knock him out of the ring, something like that. So I'd, have, I'd just going to have to give it to Kyubei in this, in this regard. It's difficult. Man, I really hope I don't get heat for that. But okay, Isaburo versus Katsura. Uh, okay, so Is- Isaburo's good. This is a kind of an another. Isaburo can use a sword though. Unlike Sakamoto, Isaburo just kind of chooses to use guns, and uh, you know he he knows his way around a sword. I don't remember whether Isaburo fought against Katsura in uh, the farewell Shinsengumi arc. I know Isaburo went up against a bunch of the Shinsengumi guys. Well, either way, in a in a tournament fight, I would say uh, Katsura would take that one. So, the W4 Katsura here. Um, Matako versus Yaimo Nikeda. So, um, Yaimon's pretty good. Shit, so Yaimon hasn't done much. See, that's the thing. I know, actually, no, Yaimon can kill the shit out of people. I mean, he beat the shit out of those guys in the Shinigami arc, you know, to save uh, Asaimon and Gintoki. Uh, and if I remember correctly, he was the one behind all those, those murders. You know, of the former uh, Joey Rebels who beat the Hitotsubashi. Um, you know, Ma- Ma- Matako's been through some shit too. You know, she's she's been in quite a few battles, so it won't be it wouldn't necessarily be easy for uh, for Yaimon, But I think Yaimon would win. I think he'd beat Matako in a one-on-one tournament fight. I think he, he he'd take Matako to be honest. So Yaimon wins that one. Uh, Obi Hajime versus Obero. Okay, this one is this one actually is a lot tougher than it sounds. I and mean, you'd say Obero, but Obi Hajime is good. I mean, if we put in Obi Hajime's abilities, I mean, he's got a, a freaking beam. Uh, he's got a beam saber. But would it be you know would Obi Hajime be able to use his beam saber? Because you know that shit's lethal. I mean, the the gunmen can't use their bullets in a, in a tournament. I guess I didn't like establish whether the swordsmen are going to be using legit swords or you know wooden swords. Let's just say they're using like fucking practice swords or wo- uh, wooden swords, so they can still hurt. E- they can so they can still hurt the shit out of each other, but you know no one's going to die. Uh, so if Obi Hajime was restricted by those same rules where he couldn't use like his deadly uh, laser sword, um, I would say Obero would take him down. 
I mean, Obi Hajime is still good, but just overall has been through some shit. Okay, I know I say this about a lot of characters, but that guy has, you know, like that guy has endurance for days. Okay, you know, he's immortal for quite a while. He's died like hundreds of times, and that guy Obro can take a beating, and he's good. You know, he's a he's a good swordsman. He can fight, and he's he's got tenacity. So I. I think Obero would beat Obi Hajime in this uh, in, in this fight, so Obero gets the W there. Now Mutsu versus Bato. Now now Mutsu versus Bato. That one, I'd say I'd say Mutsu would take that. Oh, but Bato's a Joey War veteran. He's he's pretty strong. I mean, he didn't do jack shit against Intoki, but we know what he's capable of. But also, he doesn't have the use of his of his uh, laser sword. There's that. Totally forgot that. So without, I think Bato without the use of his laser sword, he does have like mind reading abilities, so that might help him out. Uh, man, yeah, you know what? The mind reading abilities helps him, but I don't really know. It's kind of unknown uh, how good Bato is without a sword. Like how physically strong is Bato? We know Mutsu is a tank. You know, she's a, she's a Yato. She's insane. We've we've seen her pull off some, some crazy shit throughout Gintama. So I'm just going to give Mutsu the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say, just without Bato's use of his, like, of his laser sword, uh, Mutsu would win. So I'll give uh, Mutsu the W. Oh, Sogo versus Hijikata. Okay, this one, this one's nice. Um, Sogo's good, we know he's good. You know, we've seen him stand up to Kamui, of all people, and, uh, he got, he got destroyed by, uh, by Utsuro, to be honest, but, uh, you know, he also he's also fought Nobume, so he's really good. But Hijikata, Hijikata, you know, he's the he's the demonic vice chief. He's insanely strong. We've, we and we know that. And also, Sogo attacked Hijikata back in the Mitsuba arc, like you know, full fledged. He went full fledged attack, full fledged attack, and you know, Hijikata swiftly took him down. So as good as Sogo is, we've seen him stand up to some really strong characters, but. Uh, we just know for a fact that Hijikata is stronger than Sogo. You know, Sogo attacked him in the Mitsuba arc. That didn't amount to anything. And we just know Hijikata's at another level from Sogo. So Hijikata would win. Uh, he'd, uh, he'd take this one. Abuto versus Sarutobi. Uh, that one is... Uh, un unfortunately, I think Abuto would take that. Sarutobi's good, but... Abuto's too much, man. He's... We, we just know Abuto's too much. Sarutobi's good. She, she's really good, but I think just... But uh, she got really shit luck drawing Abuto in round one. Or, you know, round one for her. But, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Abuto takes that one. Nobume versus Shokaku. Okay, so... I had to admit, even though I like Sukuyo way more as a character, Shokaku was stronger than Sukuyo. At least, that's what I thought. Shokaku might be a tank, but Nobume has too much skills to be able to... To lose to Shokaku. Nobume is really good. I mean, Nobume also got destroyed by Utsuro, but just like just like Sogo, I didn't mention this for Sogo, but I will now. They still stood up to Utsuro. You know, they were they were no match. They needed like five of them, or you know, needed a bunch of people to just get a hit on Utsuro. But you know, Nobume and Sogo had like the had the tenacity to just keep going despite how outmatched they were. And, you know, we've seen Nobume take on Sogo, and we've seen Nobume beat the shit out of a bunch of palace guards and do some other things. Uh, I don't know, I... I guess this is this is just kind of a claim that Nobume is stronger than Sukuyo, at least that's what I think. Look, Nobume just has so much more, like, raw, raw talent than Sukuyo does. Sukuyo's good, she can... she's really good with kunai knives, and she can... Um, anyway, and Sukuyo has a lot of spirit, too, but... I think Nobume just has more talent, and in you know, in a sword fight, I think uh, she'd she'd have Shokaku's number. So, so uh, King Kong is out. Yeah, that one, that one, even for me, it feels a little contentious. You know, because I I went on and on about how Shokaku stood up to Katsura, but I just don't think I don't think he beat Nobume to be honest. Like. When I had to compare uh, Shokuku and Sukuyo, I had to compare the kind of things they were able to do. Sh Shokuku against Sukuyo, he'll win that, to be honest, because just Sh Shokuku is stronger, he's good with a sword, he's a tank, but Nobume is just 
in my opinion, so much better than Sukuyo as a fighter. Uh, so Nobume takes that. I just think she's too she's too good to lose to Shokoku. Um, Kamui versus Ote, that's easy. Uh, that's just a bad draw. Sorry, Ote. Um, you know, Ote can fight. It's not like it's not like she'd get Spopovich or anything, but just look. It's Kamui, man. You know, Ote's not beating Kamui. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, is there anyone else left? Takechi versus Bansai. Bansai, you know, that's not even a debate. Takechi just got lucky that he started in this round. Gintoki versus Tama. Gintoki. Bad draw for Tama. Yamazaki versus Takasugi. Bad draw for Yamazaki. Here we go. Kagura versus Jirocho. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is difficult. Jirocho is good. I mean, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gintoki. It's difficult. I mean, but, you know, Kagura, she's got that Yato power. She's strong as hell. She stood up to Kamui. Um, you know, she put up a good fight against Abuto, as we know. She one-shotted Saigo. Saigo is a Joey War veteran. He's huge. And Kagura one-shotted him. We know Jirocho is good. We just, we, we know he's really good. I mean, he beat the shit out of Gintoki in their first fight. Second fight, I mean, he got a sword cut, so technically he lost, but who knows what could have happened if they continued to go at each other. So, shit. I don't know, but they're both so strong. Oh, this is so hard. But we don't really know what Jirocho could do against Ayato. Would he be able to... I mean, has Jirocho ever even... No, Jirocho's never even fought Ayato. Who, what would he do in the situation where he has to go against the raw power of Ayato? He's older, he's got way more experience, and, you know, Kagura's good, but, you know, she's young, she's a bit of a hothead in the fight. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it to Jirocho. I don't... I feel so bad for this, because just... I don't know, because, you know, like... There's obviously like main character factor seeing Kagura get eliminated so early on, but I just don't, I, I just don't know. I feel like Jirocho would just have an edge in like in a, in a controlled environment. If we're talking all out fight to like to the death in a serious arc or something, I think Kagura would take him. But if we're talking about in a controlled environment, all you have to do is kind of outsmart your opponent, throw him out of the ring, uh, be faster, be just you know you know just be a little. Be a little more cunning than the other, and you know, get 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 a victory. Um, I feel like Jirocho would take it, just because Kagura's young and uh, and uh, yeah. Jirocho's edge when it comes to experience would be his victory against Kagura in a, in a controlled uh, tournament environment. So uh, Shimpachi versus Piriko, that we know what happened there. I mean, if if Shimpachi can beat Piriko, I think he can do it again. So that one's pretty cut and dry. Shimpachi gets that one. I mean, Pirico's good. But, you know, Shimpachi will take that one. He took it in the show, and I don't think I don't I don't think Shimpachi would lose in a rematch. I mean, Shimpachi really Shimpachi really transformed. That was the begin like the beginning of Shimpachi's transformation uh, as a character, as a fighter. That arc, really. So uh, Kondo versus Nobu Nobu. I don't know why the hell I put Nobu, Nobu in this. I'm, I'm an idiot. Actually, I've, you know what? Actually, now now I remember. Um, I wanted to put both uh, Shoguns. I wanted to put Nobu Nobu and Shige Shige. I fucking forgot to put Shige Shige in this. I mean, he, he wouldn't have gotten far, to be totally honest. But I maybe he would have gotten like a lucky draw against like Madao or something. But you know, because he has been he has been shown to be able to defend himself. I mean, he threw he threw a couple uh, uh, kunai and. Uh, Shogun assassination arc. Here's the thing. Also, I think Shige Shige has like endurance for days. By the way, I think he. Uh, here's the thing. Like Shige Shige gets hurt a lot. Like this guy gets like thrown through walls, falls off roofs. You know, he gets like he gets like his ass impaled and shit. And you know, he's still standing. You know what I mean? He takes so much. I think Shige Shige like one of his strong suits. Unlike Nobunobu, I think Shige Shige can take a hit. Even though Shige Shige has been kind of like. Knocked out a few times. He got hit really hard by the bottle in the uh, Courtesan of a Nation arc. But I think uh, Shige Shige can take so much more abuse. And it sounds shitty for Shochan. But Shige Shige, he can take a hit. So 
I feel like he, Shige Shige would be a little bit underrated in a tournament because he could take a hit and, uh, and yeah, and maybe, I don't know, maybe he'd be able to, like, maybe he'd get far uh, on account of the fact like that he's the show, that he's the Shogun, so people would be like scared to hurt him until like an accident happens inevitably, Gintama style, like someone hurts him by accident or something. I don't know. And yeah, who knows? Look, Shige Shige is underrated, that's all I'm gonna say. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, I've been rambling about Shige Shige. Kondo would beat the shit out of Nobu Nobu. I mean, I, again, Shige Shige is a little justified, but Nobu Nobu hardly. I mean, this guy gets knocked out all the fucking time. He had a cool moment in the Rocky arc, but, uh, but like, the only indication that Shige Shige has any possible skills with a sword is when he sliced the Aimon's head off. That's like, you know, he did it from behind, on, and, you know, Yaimon saw it coming, but I don't think Yaimon was going to resist. I don't know. Either way, Nobu Nobu loses. We can forget about this. Okay. Elizabeth versus Kyubei. Um Look, so Elizabeth kind of got it easy in the last two rounds. So, so look, Elizabeth is still strong as fuck, but... I think... Uh, Kyubei would take him a lot more seriously than like Tojo would or that than possibly a Simon would because Kyubei at least knows him a little better so and you know we know Kyubei is, is, is pretty sick uh, I don't know I think I think Elizabeth's uh, luck would kind of run out here. here Elizabeth is good but he had he uh, I, I don't think he'd beat Kyubei I don't know just maybe it's bullshit but I, I just don't think he'd win I don't have much of a just justification it's more of a gut feeling I think Kyubei would also win this one. Um, Katsura versus Yamon. Katsura takes that one. So, give Katsura the W. That one's, that one's pretty easy. Obro versus Mutsu. Shit, actually. You know what? I was going to say Obro easy, but Mutsu's pretty good. Nah, nah. Obro would take it. Mutsu's good, but I think, I think, I think Obro would take her down. Come on, let me submit this. Thank you. Hijikata versus Abuto. Okay, that's difficult. That's freaking hard. Hijikata's good. Shit. Hijikata's good, but you know, Abuto's Abuto. He's a Yato. We've seen what he can do. Like, who are like the big characters that Hijikata's fought? Hijikata's fought like, he fought Ito. He fought Gintoki briefly. Um, I and he fought uh, Isaburo. And Hijikata fought like a shit ton of Yatos uh, in uh, the Shogun assassination arc. So, Abuto is good, but he hasn't like he hasn't proven himself as much. Like the only major character that Abuto has fought uh, is um, is Kagura back in Yoshiwara and Flame. So that was a while ago, and uh, I don't know. We don't really know what Abuto could do against like the other major characters, but he hasn't been shown to be like super OP. We know he held back against Kagura, but like he's not given like this extreme hype like. Uh, like um, like Kamui, like Umi Bozo, like Hosen. So I think Hijigata would take it. So Hijigata would win. Nobume versus Kamui. Okay. Um, well, just so much raw power I mean, again for Kamui. But then you know Nobume is good. Nobume is quick. Good swordsman, obviously. Shit. Well, but I think uh, I think I think Kamui would take this. To be totally honest with you. Bansai versus Gintoki. Gintoki would take that. I mean, I think he's uh, he's gotten the better of Bansai before. I don't think it'd be any different. Bansai, you know, he's good, but he's like he's just a little under. Uh, in Toki and the rest of the, like the rest of the Joey Four, you know he, he he we've seen like Bonsai admires them, so he knows like well he definitely admires Takasugi, but in the Rocky arc he's like holy shit these you know these other guys like these are the guys Takasugi fought with, so Takasugi versus Jirocho, oh man, uh that's actually difficult as fuck. Um, well okay so. If we're going by the logic that Gintoki was able to disarm Jirocho in their second fight, um, okay, so here's the thing: Jirocho did beat the shit out of Gintoki. We know that, but 
This is the thing. Gintoki wasn't really thinking clearly, if you remember. You know, I mean, uh, Gintoki was like, he was in rage mode, so he just kind of went, you know, he just kind of, he went all guns blazing. He just went in there. He didn't really, he didn't really fight with the cool head he usually fights with. He didn't have, like, kind of the, the, the usual, like, Gintoki cunning and you know, mind games. Uh, he just kind of, he just went in there, and that, that, even though Gintoki looked strong as hell, and he definitely was, I mean, I mean, Gintoki was, like, ber in berserk mode, but that, in, in Gintoki's case, I feel like that's more of a handicap when he's not thinking clearly, uh, when, you know, when he's not thinking clearly in a fight, so, so when Gintoki composed himself and then went up to Jirocho again, he was able to disarm him. That doesn't mean he'd necessarily be able to win, because the fight just ended as soon as he disarmed, uh, he disarmed Jirocho, and Jirocho, Jirocho was like, okay, yeah, fight's over. So, but again, this is a controlled uh, environment where, you know, all you need to do is, is uh, throw your opponent out of the ring or get him to give up or, you know, knock him out. I don't know. And um, so if Gintoki is able to do that to Jirocho, if he's able to just, get, you know, disarm disarm Jirocho and, you know, just get, get, the better of the, get the better of him in that situation... I think Takasugi would be able to do something similar. I think in this controlled environment, that would give Takasugi a little bit of an advantage. Uh, so I think Takasugi could also pull it off. I think he can get the better of Jirocho and win in this uh, tournament. Chimpachi versus Kondo. Okay, so... Uh, I, I know it sounds weird, but maybe Chimpachi would be like more riled up fighting in this one he, like he'd fight a little harder if he's fighting against Kondo because you know Kondo stalks Ote all the time so Shinpachi's a little pissed off he'd be like this is you know this is my time where I get to teach Kondo a lesson for being a dick but so I think that would like give Shinpachi a little bit of motivation I don't think he'd end up victorious against Kondo Kondo you know he's the commander of the Shinsengumi really good we've we've seen him in action in the uh, uh, shogun assassination farewell shinsengumi and uh, Shins in shinsengumi crisis if i remember correctly but um so yeah and you know obviously kondo's got that age advantage that he's kondo's just been through so much shit i mean i went through this in my shinpachi video uh like my character focus video on shinpachi uh shinpachi is surrounded by people who've like been through so much more shit than he has like, you know, these these crazy conditions, like where, you know, people are fighting for their lives, they're growing up in poverty, they're, you know, they're mercenaries, they're they're escaping wars and shit. Kondo just has that edge and experience over Shinpachi, where I think he'd, he'd take Shinpachi down in, 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 in a sword fight. So Kondo wins that. The quarterfinals. All right, Kyubei versus Katsura. Uh, they have a little bit of a rivalry, as we know, you know, as like... Two of the the it, like failed serious characters. Like they try and be serious, but they both fail miserably at it. Um, uh, I think Katsura would take it. I think Kubei's good, but just you know, Katsura's a Joey War veteran. Katsura, you know, Katsura's always on the run from the Shinsengumi. He's always plotting shit, you know. And I, I just think uh, that experience of you know Ka Katsura's like you know. Basically, from the beginning of Gintama till now, Katsura is essentially always in battle. Out of like the main cast characters, he's one of the guys that's had like the least amount of fights. But he's always in battle mode. You know what I mean? Like Katsura is never able to let his guard down as a known Joey Shishi rebel. So he's always running from the police. He's always fighting Shinsengumi members. We've obviously seen what uh, Katsura can do. Uh, uh, farewell Shinsengumi, Rocky Arc. So yeah, Ka Katsura just has. He'd win. He, he'd win there. Obro versus Hijikata. Damn. Um, this is more of a, a, a gut feeling. Uh, I think just Obro has a little more on, on Hijikata. I think he'd take it. Kamui versus Gintoki. Okay. So we've seen a glimpse of that. If people even give a shit about this video and actually watch it, um, I'm screwed whoever I choose here. Kamui versus Gintoki. We saw a glimpse of that in the Rocky arc. Who, who, who do I think would win? I actually don't know. I'm 100% conflicted right now. 
I know, I'm, I'm literally, I'm completely lost when it comes to this one. So we saw it, we saw it briefly in, uh, in the Rocky arc, but that was like, that was kind of interrupted. Kagura got back into the fold, Shinpachi showed up, then Kamui went in berserk mode. It was mostly uh, Shinpachi and Kagura versus, uh, uh, versus Kamui until, you know, uh, Gintoki kind of got up in the latter half of that confrontation and held Kamui in order to get Kagura to beat him, I guess. Oh my god. I'm just gonna say Gintoki, screw it. Gintoki wins. I, I don't know. That one, that one is extremely difficult. I mean, Gintoki did do pretty well in his brief exchange with Kamui. Actually, now that I think about it, a little bit of justification, I suppose. Um, Gintoki's kind of smart, I guess. Like, he, he acts like an idiot a lot of the time, but when it comes to when it comes to fighting Gintoki, sometimes I feel like he can find creative ways to win, creative ways to end a conflict. So I feel like he would have that, uh, you know, extra bit of, uh, of cunning over Kamui to be able to, you know, find a way for Kamui to get himself uh, thrown out of the ring. You know, I, I don't think he's I don't think he's gonna knock out Kamui or uh, get Kamui to give up. He's definitely not getting Kamui to give up. But I think he. Gintoki can find a smart way to get Kamui to fall out of the ring and then go out of bounds and lose. That's possible. So I think Gintoki, uh, you know, he's he's a bit smarter than Kamui, so, and he, you know he's older, so he would have that edge, and he would win. So finally, Takasugi versus Kondo. In my head, when I thought of this video, I was like, holy shit, that could be really fun. That could be that could be cool, you know, to to make a video based on like a, a tournament arc for Gintama. And, you know, in the beginning it was kind of cool, like, theorizing, but now it's stressful because now, like, it's not so easy to make these decisions now that, like, the, the, you know, the tournament is narrowing down. So, holy, holy shit, it's, it's actually stressful right now, I actually don't know. Takasugi is a more well-known character, more popular character, so, you know, I feel like it's always going to seem biased if I choose, like, the main popular characters. But, to be fair, I mean, I, I did vote... Jirocho to beat Kagura, so I'm not, and Kagura is my favorite character, I've stated that in a video I think like two or three times, so I'm not like, I'm not acting on, you know, character biases, I'm trying to like, it, I'm in my mind I'm trying to formulate how exactly this would go down, it's not easy, I'm pretty sure a lot of these like are bullshit, there's probably some details I missed, you know, when describing why or like the abilities of a character, but I'm trying, and I think, I think Takas Takasugi takes it. I'm, I'm just gut feeling, gut feeling Takasugi takes it. Kondo, Kondo's strong, but look, Takasugi's is kind of... Yeah, Kondo's a member of the Shinsengumi. Tak Takasugi's kind of got like a a fire, you know. He, at this point, Shogun assassination hadn't happened yet. He hasn't kind of reconciled with everyone. So he's still kind of got, got a, a fire lit, you know, in, in his heart right now. You know, so he's still... um. I feel like fighting against a member of the of the Shinsengumi, he'd be he'd be pretty fiery he'd be pretty fiery in that match, and he would give it all he's got, you know, because he's still pretty salty. He's salty at the Bakufu, he's salty at the Tendo Show, and Kondo serves both of those. So I think he would uh, he would win, even though it's like I I feel like since Kondo's more Kondo is more lax since it's a tournament, Kondo's not like fighting as if it's to the death, but Takasugi because he's fighting against a, a guy from the Shinsengumi. The commander of the Shinsengumi, like his sworn enemy, he he would fight like like it's the last day of his life. I think just just to just to prove a point, just to stick it to the Shinsengumi. Do you know what I mean? So, I think Takasugi would win that. Kondo would be lax. He'd be like, okay, oh, this is a tournament. And I said in the beginning, uh, we're assuming that all the like all the like known criminals like Joey Shishi and stuff are in disguise. So Kondo doesn't know this is Takasugi, and. I don't think Kondo ever fought Takasugi, so he doesn't know his fighting style, he doesn't know his strategies. So I think uh, Kondo is just at a disadvantage. He doesn't know this is Takasugi. He, uh, and Takasugi's like fighting like crazy because it's a member of the Shinsengumi of the Bakufu slash Tendosho that took away Shoyo. So I think Takasugi wins that. So on to the semi-finals. Katsura versus Obero. Shit. I mean this seems pretty typical now, I got three of the Joey four in the semi-finals. So Katsura versus Obero, that one is a little, that one is difficult for sure. So here's the thing for uh, both of these fights right here. Um, 
Katsura and Takasugi will b both start disguised, but I'm, I'm going to begin talking about Katsura versus Oboro. Oboro, he at least knows Katsura. I mean, we didn't see them fight back in the Joey War arc, but he managed to capture Takasugi, Gintoki, and uh, Sh Shoyo, and, and, um, and Gintoki. So, I feel like if Katsura was fighting Oboro, Oboro would find out pretty quick that he's fighting against Katsura. But would that help him? I mean, we know Oboro had like a whole contingent of Naraku and Tendosho soldiers to help him out. You know, so it's not like they could really go toe to toe. So, we don't really know. I mean, I don't really know if Oboro could take Katsura one on one. That's hard. That's hard to say. Okay, so we know Oboro's good. If we remember, Courtesan of a Nation. Okay, so much like uh, Oboro's fight with Gintoki, I, I think. Oboro can use the element of surprise to, uh, uh, you know, knock Katsura out of the ring. Because if we remember, Oboro had these concentrated energy beams that he could use. And he used them on Gintoki to great effect in their first fight. I mean, he sent Gintoki flying a bunch of times uh, just from doing that. If he uses that on Katsura, he can definitely send him flying too. Okay, you know what? I just I just remembered something. I don't think Oboro would want, would, uh, uh, you know, show his face in this tournament. If that makes any sense you know he's not a wanted man he's like he's a part of the naraku which is a part of the tendo show so he 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 can show his face publicly but i think for the sake of his mission and you know for the, for the sake of his own goals uh he wouldn't want to reveal himself like when you fought gintoki he didn't reveal himself either until gintoki destroyed his uh, his his headgear his mask so i think if he had that headgear on the uh, people fighting him wouldn't know that it's uh, that it's uh, Obero in there. Again, you know, not a lot of them even know Obero up to this point. And the only people who know Obero uh, in this tournament are uh, Joey Four uh, and um, and Nobume. So I think Obero can use that element of surprise and uh, knock Katsura out of the ring. That's why I think Obero would win. Uh, Katsura wouldn't really know who he's fighting, and Obero would do what he did with Gintoki, kind of come in there with his energy blasts. And out of the ring goes Katsura. Okay, Gintoki versus Takasugi. Technically, Gintoki is like, it's, it's a criminal too. But I'm mean, not to the extent of Takasugi and I guess even Katsura. Katsura is like a part, officially, formally known as a member of the Joey Shishu. So Gintoki can get away. I mean, Gintoki's in public, like, so is Katsura. But Gintoki is in public, like, all the time. And, you know... He's not a member of the Joey Shishi. Officially, he's just kind of like, he's an odd jobs business owner. So, with, with you know, with that out of the way, um, Takasugi, as I established before, is disguised. Um, but I, Gintoki knows Takasugi very well. So, you know, once they actually start fighting, and he might have even noticed before in all of Takasugi's previous matches, that, you know, this isn't, uh, this isn't just some random dude, this is Takasugi. I know that fighting style anywhere. So I think Gintoki would already know before the match even started, um, you know, and just like when they fought in Shogun Assassination, they probably, you know, taunt each other, talk some shit, uh, you know, and go off about their, uh, you know, ideologies in regards to Shoyo's teachings, Shoyo's execution. So I feel like once they know that both of the others are there, uh, like once, you know, once they both acknowledge each other and recognize each other. I don't know, would the fight play out like it did in the, in the Shogun Assassination arc? Would there be, like, that fire? Because when Takasuki and Gintoki met in the Shin, uh, Shogun Assassination arc, that was the first time they had met since the Benny Zakura arc. Would it be any different from their Shogun Assassination fight? Maybe because they're in public, they might want to hold back a little bit. Or else, maybe their identities will be revealed somehow. Maybe if they, you know, or, you know, not their identities, just Takasuki. He's the only one disguised in this situation. Maybe they won't fight as intensely because, uh, you know, if, let's say, if they fight too hard, Takasugi's disguise will will be gone or some shit. I don't know. So, this is hard to determine because, you know, they had a 100%, obviously, they had a 100% serious fight. Um, they went all in. We all remember this fight. Legendary. But nobody won. It was even. I think it was even the entire way. At least that's how I saw it. This is not the stage where Takasugi wants to make his, like, final stand 
against Gitoki and really like prove his point. I feel like if Takasugi had any reason to come here, it's just kind of like to to scope out scope out his enemies, see how you know, see how see how things are going, and just kind of gauge the strength of everyone he knows he has to eventually go up against. Because at this point, he's still uh, you know, a villain, I guess. So, with that in mind, I don't Takasugi would not uh, go in like all guns blazing like he did in the Shogun Assassination arc. I don't know if Gintoki would let go of the intensity. Takasugi would because he doesn't want to obviously he doesn't want to give himself away and he's just there to like to gauge to scope out his competition and this is like in a public place like like in this arena for example like this major event I don't think he'd want to uh, you know make his final stand there you know the reason he was able to go all out in the Shogun assassination arc is because that was the final stage they were launching an attack on Shige Shige's convoy uh, you know, the, the, obviously his Kiheitai were there, Harasame were there, and Naraku showed up. So, like, that was the stage. If, it was, if there was any place to, like, go all out against Gitoki and try and kill him, that was, the, that was the place. But it's not this tournament. So I think with Takasugi holding back a little, and uh, possibly Gintoki not letting go of as much of the intensity, because he knows it's Takasugi, uh, and he's not like, and Gintoki isn't planning some sort of big stand against the government like uh, Takasugi is. So I think Gintoki would win. I don't think he'd knock him out. I think he'd manage to throw him out of the. I think he'd manage to throw him out of the ring because Takasugi, of course, won't be fighting as hard. So I think Gintoki would win just by count that uh, Takasugi wouldn't have a reason to go all out against Gintoki like he did in Shogun Assassination. Otherwise, he could have during the Benizakura arc or during episode 17 when uh, Takasugi was introduced. So, uh, Gitoki wins this one. Okay, so the final two matches, the third place match and obviously the final between Obero and Gintoki. Uh, I'll say Katsura versus Takasugi. Um, so... Again, Takasugi does. Takasugi obviously is enemies with Katsura too, but he doesn't have the same animosity that uh, he doesn't have the same animosity for Katsura as Gintoki. So that one's a little more difficult. I'm just gonna say, uh, like this one's kind of a throwaway anyway. It's a third place match. Who cares? But I think Takasugi doesn't have as much uh, animosity. Katsura and Takasugi in general don't have as much animosity towards each other as let's say Gintoki and Takasugi do. So I'm going to say Takasugi wins. Again, this is a throwaway, so I'm not going to give this one too much thought. I'll just say Takasugi takes third place. And finally, Obero versus Gintoki. Now, this is the final. So, the final of this tournament arc, Obero versus Gintoki. Here's the thing, I'm screwed whoever I choose. Because if I choose Gintoki, it feels like, you know, main character bias. Typical main character wins. But... If I choose Obero, it'll seem like a contrarian thing, like I'm just choosing Obero so I don't make the predictable choice. I feel like whoever I choose between uh, Obero and Gintoki, uh, I'm screwed. Like, there's really no getting out of this 100% unscathed in terms of like possibly gaining criticism. So I'm just gonna say, um, I'm just, yeah, so I'm just gonna go for it at this point. Here's the thing, Obro hasn't revealed himself against Katsura, right? So technically, Gintoki doesn't really know that this is Obro. Uh, you know, Obro knows that's Gintoki. Um, Obro can't be a one-trick pony, so Gintoki definitely saw Obro use his power beams against Katsura, so he's, he's going to be wary of it. Gintoki will be wary of Obro's uh, uh, like power beams. Even if he doesn't know it's Obro, he saw Obro use them. He saw Obro use those abilities against Katsura, so he's not gonna fall for it like Katsura did. And if we remember, during Gintoki and Obro's first fight, Gintoki had no idea that Obro could use those abilities. So he caught him by surprise, blasted him across the goddamn room, and uh, you know he destroyed Gintoki the first time. But when Gintoki survived his, or you know, when he survived that beating and encountered Obro again, he beat him. You know he did like. Technically, he should have killed Obro because Ob because Obro was uh, immortal. Obro survived. So, I'm gonna say since Gintoki has 
uh, the knowledge of Obero's power beams, and we've seen that Gintoki, with the knowledge of Obero's powers, can beat Obero. I think Gintoki would win. I think Gintoki would win this tournament in the end, and he would beat Obero in this final. It. I know it seems typical, you know, main character, definitely gonna win, but you know, this possibly could have went a different way if the draw was, uh, if the draw was different. You know, just, you know, it's it's all, a, it's all because of how I made the seeds randomized. So, Gintoki could have gotten someone who he wouldn't have done so well against in a controlled tournament environment. But, you know, given all the people that he got in um, in this tournament, I think it's pretty clear. Gintoki obviously would beat Tama. Uh, Gintoki has gotten the better of Bonsai before, so we know he's better. Uh, you know, Gintoki has an experience edge on Kamui. He's like, he's, he's a little more cunning. I think he'd get, get Kamui out of there. I explained why Gintoki would beat Takasugi in this specific scenario. And I also explained why Gintoki would beat Obero. So, if the draw went differently, let's see, like, if, if Gintoki faced off against Obero in the preliminaries or in, like, the, the first round, then... I think it, uh, Gintoki might have been eliminated. He would have done what he did to Katsura in this tournament, but against Gintoki. So, Gintoki's win is because of his strength, but also because, you know, he got a little lucky in the draw. You know, we know that he can... The guys he fought in the beginning, we know he could beat them. And, uh, you know, because this is a controlled environment with a few circumstances at play, this isn't like an all-out fight to the death. Uh, we know he could be Kamui and uh, Takasugi in this situation. And because Obero would have to reveal his powers to beat Katsura, at least, you know, that's how I saw it, he would beat Obero because he'd know about the powers. So that is uh, my tournament arc for Gintama. Hope you guys found it interesting. Uh, I had fun doing this. It got, it got stressful at a point, you know, where like I had to choose between characters I really wouldn't know who'd win. And I'd, I'd like, you know, I have to pull things out of my ass. I have to just, you know, um, put, take the the factors that that I put in, like the disguises, like the control tournament environment. I have to put that in there and see who would come out on top. This isn't like definitive. This isn't like my absolute opinion on who's stronger than who. You know, because I, I my hypothetical scenario here is like it's a tournament. There's rules. You know, you can get knocked out of the ring. You can give up. So. Turn, you know, tournaments, controlled tournaments, which are pretty common in Shonen Jump, usually are just as much about strategy as it is like raw strength. And I didn't make this like the dark tournament where you can literally kill your opponent, right? So it's not just a battle of raw strength. You can't kill your opponent. You you can win. You don't have to like knock your opponent out or kill them to win. You can throw them out of the ring. You can be a little smarter. So that's why uh, that's why things ended up the way they are. Either way, this is just for fun, so so if you made it all the way to this point, uh, I hope you're not salty. I don't think I don't think you'll be salty, I'm, you know, this is just for fun. Either way, we know this is not going to happen in Gintama, so might as well just have fun with it. So, uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I thank you for all of your support so far, everybody. All 135 of you, and anyone watching right now who hasn't subscribed, thank you for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, if uh, you like my content, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at uh, Thunderbro17. And uh, thank you and take care.